All right, what's up guys? Tonight I got a little carburetor video coming your direction. And I'll tell you right off the bat, it's gonna be, you know, of the garbage-ish quality. So, um, I've got three quadrajets laid out for you tonight. And uh, that's all this video is gonna pertain to tonight, is specifically quadrajets, because that's all I own on all my cars, and it's all I've ever learned off of. And you know, if you play with these carburetors long enough, you learn how to use them and not call them a piece of shit, because most people don't like them because they play with them and they, they bog out and they don't know how to tune them right. But anyway, it's just not gonna be much action tonight. It's just gonna be me, the tripod, and these carburetors. In front of you directly, there's an 800 CFM 1984 Chevy Quadrajet. It came off of an 84 uh, Chevy van. Oh, before I get ahead of myself, let me introduce this video of what it's supposed to be about. This is all about air horn, um, how to prevent warping your air horn on these things, because the air horn is the top plate of this carburetor, as you can see where I have it disassembled on this one. This piece of my hand is called the air horn, and the air horns on these quadrajets warp very easy, and what I mean is the metal itself, the casting, gets distorted and they'll cause air leaks in between the air horn and the main body of the carburetor. And when that happens, this thing's gonna run like shit at base idle, it's gonna fucking, it's gonna feel like a misfire, your car will run weird at a red light, it'll go, it'll lug like, and um, uh, but anyway, this is an 800 CFM, this is a 750 CFM. I'm not going to get into this video how I deciphered each carburetor and which which one's which, but um, I can do that at a later time. If you guys are interested in how to decipher an 800 versus a 750 CFM Quadrajet, I can make that video for you guys. Just, you know, let me know in the comments, and I'd be gladly to do it for you guys. But anyway, back to the basics. That's an 800, that's a 750. I got this one over here. I'm not sure what it is. This came off of that 87 Monte Carlo SS that I did about a year ago for my brother's friend. That's the factory carb off of it. And, um, it's broken. It's actually got a broken ear where it fastens to the intake manifold. But this carburetor's never gonna see the road again. It's just a hunk of shit in my eyes. The choke won't even fully close. But, uh, oh, and this is also a computer-controlled carburetor. It's got the, uh, sensors and shit right here. These are both from like the late 70s to the very early 80s. But anyway, before I get ahead of myself, I'm rambling and shit. Oh, these are all Chevy carburetors because the fuel in it goes in on the side here, here, and here, as where a Buick Olds or Pontiac, or a Bop, if you will, goes straight into the front center. But. This piece right here, it's called an air horn. Now, these things can warp. I don't know why, I don't know what the metal's made out of. Who knows? But, the main thing that makes these things go bad is quite simple. And at the day and age that these carburetors have gotten to, they're all like 30 years old plus, it's probably been done to any carburetor you get your hands on. But, um, it is as simple as this. You see this wing nut on top? When you put your air cleaner on, and if you crank this thing down as tight as you can get it, your, this rod right here only fastens into the air horn itself. So when you got your air filter on top, and you crank this wing nut down as tight as you can get it, it's pulling the rod up through the sheet metal or whatever these things are cast out of. So tight that it causes the warpage. This one right here is warped and you can see where it screws in right there and that's it. Doesn't That rod never comes through the bottom, it just screws into the base of this air horn. What happens when these things get warped 
is these secondary doors start to bind like these do. See how I can't push them open? I mean, I can if I push hard enough, but I don't know if you can see the light coming through the cracks, but you can see there's plenty of daylight coming through the center. There's plenty of daylight up here, but up here there's none. That's because this whole casting is distorted and these doors are binding with the housing. And uh, you can hear that right there, you hear that click? Oh. It's not gonna click now. You see how much effort that took just to open these doors? Look how much effort it takes to open these doors. These are not warped. My 85 Riviera used to have a warped air horn and it took us forever to figure out why that car ran like shit. But the main causing factor is over tightening your stud for the air cleaner. It just puts so much pressure on those things. And um, it was just kind of a video I wanted to make really quick and briefly tonight and get this information out there because there might be some older people and shit that know about this trick and they've known it for all these years, but then there's the younger crowd like us and it's not common knowledge for us. And I don't know if this pertains to any other carburetors besides just Rochester, the Quadrajets in particular. I highly doubt Edelbrock's got this issue because they're such an old carburetor and they were bought from, you know, Chrysler and then they were turned into an aftermarket company and they probably worked out the bugs and shit. And same goes for Holly. But, um, this is, as far as I know, mainly a GM thing. But, um, this is the carburetor right here in the center that I'm debating using on my wagon when I get that 350 put in it. I would like to go with a Holly 750 Street Demon, but them shits are expensive. They're close to $400 a pop. <coughs> and um, eventually I will put one on, but I think I'm gonna be stuck with this one for now. But yeah, this carburetor is never gonna see the road ever again. My dad gave me this shit when I was like 12 and told me to just take it apart and do whatever I wanted to it. And, uh, I'm a lot older now. Fuck, I just lost a power valve. Anyway, I'm a lot older now. And I used this when I was a kid to learn how these things work. So this one's just been torn apart. I lost all the parts for it years ago and shit. I just have the three main pieces to it now. Like the, the throttle doors and shit and the main body and the air horn. But I also think this is a very good piece to just discuss things on. Like they're quite simple. You got your fuel inlet, your fuel filters in here. If you want to do a fuel filter on these things, you just unscrew this shit right here. Slide your filter inside there. And screw this shit back in. Your fuel bowl's right here. Of course, you're gonna have a float that goes in there. And there's your two primaries in the front. And you got your secondaries in the back. One thing I like about these carburetors is they got all this uh, technology terminal or technology like terms and shit out there these days. Everything's smart. You got a smartphone, smart TV, smart this, smart that. This is like the original smart carburetor. This and a thermoquad are like the original smart carburetors. You got your fr uh, primaries in the front. You know they do their thing. But when you get into the back, they're self-regulating. Let's say this is a let's say it's an 800 CFM and you only need 650 CFMs out of this shit. Like a little small time Edelbrock. If you're running a Chevy 305 or an old 307 or an old uh, 260, it's not going to take 800 CFMs when this thing gets wide open throttled because these air doors in the back get pulled down by engine vacuum. Now, if you got a little old 260 or a 305 that can only pull them open this far, that's fine, because that's all it needs. If you got, like, let's say, a heavy-duty 350 or a 455, it'll pull them open all the way. And what these do, this little rod, it's got this little thing back here that rides on a cam. See how it lifts this part up right here? 
That controls the secondary metering rods. And you'll see what it does when I open the doors. It pulls them up. Well, let me uh, straighten them out. This is fucking hard to do right now. There we go. Watch, I'll pull the doors open. You see how the rods go up? When you're at base idle, or you're not using the secondaries, these will stay down inside the jets. When you step on the gas, it will pull them out of the jets and it'll allow the fuel to flow through. Now if you only open them up halfway, they're only gonna go up halfway. If you need them all the way up, they'll go all the way up. I just think it's a nifty design. It's a self-regulating carburetor. Like I only need about 750 CFMs on that 350 and shit with the cam I'm running and all that stuff. I am guess I'm gonna throw an 800 on there, but it's not gonna use the full potential 800 CFMs. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm getting a little out of control and rambling on and shit like a maniac. And uh, I'm not trying to lose your attention too quick. But um, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I hope all you guys that did watch the Chrysler video uh, a week and a half ago enjoyed everything you saw and uh, I know I you know I could have made a nice little cute little music video out of it and added some sounds and just thrown some shot of cars in there but I'd rather I did the more natural approach just walk through that shit <laughs> you know throw my commentary in there so um, if you guys like this video if you found it informative you know like comment if you're not subscribed subscribe and um let me know down in the comments, what can I do to improve this videos and shit? Should I stop rambling on? Should I try and like make these like commercialized pretty videos right direct to the point? Do you guys enjoy me just bullshitting? Because if you enjoy my bullshitting, I can bullshit some more and just make more videos like this. So uh, let me hear your fucking feedback in the comments and let me know what you think. Alright? But uh, that's about it for tonight. I'm going to close this out, and uh, I still don't know how to close videos, so I'll see you guys next time, and whatever you do, have fun, don't get in trouble, and don't do nothing I wouldn't do. See you guys later.